Hey, so we are on our last lesson for our plant unit, um, which uh, goes more into plant reproduction, which we talked about some with um, flowers, because that's where it happens. Uh, reproduction for the plant happens in the flower. And we're going to talk more about seeds, because that is what a plant produces to make more plants. All right, so a little more on seeds. Uh, seeds come in all shapes and sizes. They can be large, like an avocado pit in this PowerPoint, or tiny, like a dandelion seed. And you've seen dandelion seeds, they're fun, but they are very small. Um, but their purpose is all the same, which is to make more plants. So no matter the shape or the size of the seed, its purpose is to make more plants. That is its only job, is to make another plant, which is why plants make seeds, to make more plants. So the, they don't die out. All right, so a seed we talked about forms after an egg cell and the ovary of a flower is fertilized by a pollen grain. So quick review, remember, uh, the pollen grains are found on the anther, which is the male part, um, the top of the male part of the flower, um, which was the stamen. Um, and those pollen grains get blown towards the pistil, the female um, part of the plant and they get stuck on the top of the pistil, which was the stigma. And so then the pollen grain goes down the tube to the bottom where the ovary is. And that's in, in the ovary are the eggs. And so the pollen goes and fertilizes an egg. And that is how we get a seed. Um, the embryo in a seed is the little plant, okay? Um, so in this image for parts of the seed, you can see um, that the little embryo part, that is the baby plant. Um, the rest of the seed, or most of the seed, is just food storage. And the hard outside is what we call the seed coat because it's to protect the seed and the baby plant. Um, so just like you put on a coat to protect you from the rain or from the cold in the winter, the seed puts on a coat to protect the little plant inside. Um, and so then after the seed lands in soil and gets the right amount of light and water, um, the embryo will grow into a sprout, which is what we call germinating. So once the seed germinates, that's the getting the right amount of light and water and being put in soil, it, this embryo starts to grow into the sprout and it is the first part that you see pop up um, out of the soil. All right, so what seeds need? What are the three things that seeds need? There are three things, I'm pretty sure you know them. The first thing, is fertile soil. Um, this is a picture I took of my own plants growing. You can see the little tiny green leaves. They're very small, but if you look, you can see them. Um, those are the little sprouts that came from the embryo of the seeds. They need plenty of sunlight, okay, because we talked about how light is, um, they need light to live, but also to do photosynthesis, which is how they live, because that's how they produce their food. And they need plenty of water, again, because they use water to do photosynthesis to make their food, okay? So those are the three things that seeds need to uh, live and to grow. Um, but now, how seeds travel. Now you might be asking, why do seeds travel? They just plop off the tree or the flower to the ground right below. You're right, a lot of the times they do. But those seeds, do you think that they grow very well when the big tree above them is covering out the sun and sucking up all the water before they can get it with their big roots. No, they will not. The big tree will kill them out or, you know, because they won't be able to get any water or light. So the seeds wouldn't um, benefit from being there. They wouldn't be able to actually grow into a plant. Um, so they have come up with, they being um, plants, different plants, um, have come up with different ways to transport their seeds away from the parent plant so that their kid seeds can grow up or their baby seeds can grow up, their baby plants can grow, they travel away from the parent plant. Otherwise the parent plant will, not on purpose, but kill the baby plant because it will take the water and the sun for itself. Um, so one of the first ways uh, seeds travel is by tagging along on animals, um, which is where you get like burrs and things. Um, if you have horses, you know about this because the horses always like to find them and get them stuck in their mane. Um, 
but uh, and or on yourself, like you see in the picture there, that's a human. Um, when you go through the woods, you might get stuck with them. Um, but they are not just those bigger brown ones that we're familiar with. There are smaller seeds that have, they have this like little hook on them that we can't see with our eyes, but that's why it gets stuck to like dog hair or our socks or things. Um, and they get to travel that way because the animal goes by, picks up the seed, takes it farther away from wh where it had dropped near the parent plant. Another way they travel is floating on the wind. You're familiar with this one with the dandelion, right? We blow them for fun, but technically we're helping them scatter away from the parent plant and make more dandelions. And also the second little picture there um, are the helicopter seeds. Um, I'm hoping you know about them. I loved playing with them as a kid. Um, they're actually maple tree seeds, in case you wanted to know what they belong to. Um, but I've always called them helicopter seeds because they do that. Um, you th pick them up and throw them and they spin in a circle like this. Um, and so they fly or float along the wind so that they can make a new maple tree somewhere else because a uh, maple tree is not going to sprout up right underneath another maple tree. And then the last way they do is by being eaten through fruit. So. Um, or nuts like this acorn um, that the chipmunk is eating. So um, we technically don't help as much with this as animals do. I mean, we do eat fruit and nuts and they're good, um, <clears throat> but the seeds travel this way because the chipmunk will eat the acorn, or in this case, the monkey will eat the fruit or birds eat the fruit, a lot of them, okay? And the seeds have that hard seed coat around the outside, remember, to protect the little baby plant. So that seed isn't digested with the rest of the fruit. And I'm sure you've seen this. Um, and so it travels literally through the animal, okay, because it was eaten. And then that animal goes somewhere else that's not near the parent plant. And they poop it back out. And the seed is there. It's got some fertile soil because that's good for growing. And wonderful uh, new plant life is started because the seed can just start growing right there wherever it was um, uh, pooped out by the animal, you know? Um, so yeah, it's actually a, a genius way of um, traveling away from the parent plant um, because then they even get their own little pile of fertilizer um, to like, absorb and use to grow into a bigger, stronger plant. All right, the um, last topic we have to cover really quickly is called spores. Um, so some plants reproduce with spores. They don't reproduce with seeds. There aren't a lot of them, but there are some that we need to talk about. Um, so a spore is like a half completed plant. Um, it's not like a seed. So the best way to explain this is that pretty much when a spore is given off by the parent plant. Um, once it lands in a good place, like with soil and stuff, the spore can just start make, like start growing into another plant by itself. It doesn't need to be fertilized. So remember to get a seed, you have to have fertilization where the pollen grain uh, goes down the stigma or like sticks on the stigma, goes down to the ovary and fertilizes the egg. And so that pollen plus egg fertilizing it makes that seed. Okay, well, the spore doesn't need that because it already has everything it needs. It just goes out into the world and makes another plant. Okay, and the two plants you need to know that use spores to reproduce are ferns, as I've pictured, and mosses. I didn't have any pictures of mosses. Um, so to point out what a spore is, in the first picture, I actually took that picture. Um, you can usually find them. They are on the underside of a fern frond or the fern leaves. Um, I was super excited when I found this picture in the woods because I haven't actually like gotten to take my own or, or see my own. Um, so yeah, in the top picture, that's the one I took, you, each separate circle is um, what gives off the spores for the ferns. Now, mine are like a yellowish green color because I don't think they were quite ready to give off the spores. Um, assuming, which I don't know for sure, but assuming that ferns reproduce like everything else in the spring. Um, I took the picture in like April, so it was springtime, but um, they might have ripened a little bit and have been uh, not ripened, that's fruit, but like, you know, um, matured, that's a better word, uh, matured into giving off the spores a month or two later. Um, so the bottom picture 
the whole point of me saying that is that most of the time, if you see a picture or people are talking about spores, they're going to be brown like that. Okay, so once they are producing or putting out the spores, um, each little circle, they're brown. So in the second picture, that's what you'd see more likely as a picture of spores um, because each little brown circle puts out spores for the fern. Okay, so um, that has been plant reproduction. Most plants reproduce with seeds, as we've talked about. Only ferns and mosses that you need to know uh, reproduce with the spores um, that are like little mini plants and don't need to be fertilized, like everything else where you need the pollen and the egg together um, to make a seed. So um, seeds, again, can be like nuts, because um, if you took some of the nuts you eat and you planted them, you could get the trees or bushes those nuts come from. Um, fruit that we've eaten, I mean, think about a strawberry, it's covered with seeds on the outside. Um, so if you planted those seeds, you'd get more strawberry plants. Okay, and then you have everything else that does not produce a um, fruit or a nut per se. Um, so any of your other normal like flower plants that are just flowers like the dandelions or um, you know anything you might have in your garden. I'm growing a marigold right now. Um, those obviously just have the flower and they make the seed inside the ovary and then they just drop to the ground and make more marigolds or more dandelions. Um, or in the dandelion's case, remember they travel through the wind to get away from the parent plant, okay? Um, but the fruit bearing ones will make a fruit um, that is then eaten and um, dispelled in waste <laughs> or pooped out somewhere else. Um, pretty ingenious of the plants in order to survive. So anyway, this is the last part of our plant unit. I hope it was pretty easy um, and that you already knew about seeds anyway and that really spores is it, uh, an easier concept of just knowing that it's like a mini plant and it's ready to go. It doesn't need to be fertilized. And the only two plants that use it is ferns and mosses as far as you're concerned. So um, I will get to see you in our next unit.